Hello everyone, it's uh, Techman Pat here, Pat, and I'm here with Richard Garber from DG Tech. Welcome, Richard. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. Um, look, we just wanted to find out a little bit about your company, uh, DG Tech. You guys are doing some really interesting stuff comparably to the NBN and what's happening in the telco world in Australia. Um, so it'll be great to find out and if you could tell us what you guys are up to. Um, and uh, those, for those following at home, uh, DG Tech is uh, an ultra-fast broadband provider in Melbourne um, with a pretty big twist. Uh, but first, Richard, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. What what do you do for um, DigiTech and a little bit, maybe a bit of background of where you came from, how you got to uh, DigiTech and how you guys help them with their, um, well, I guess their systems, their, their uh, internet, because it is internet after all, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, I guess my story started quite away from telecommunications, but um, mm -hmm. after graduating from high school and university, I was a mechanical engineer and I kind of, Looked for a job in manufacturing, but at that point, manufacturing was a bit tricky. So I ended up working for um, a wholesale mobile phone provider, which then became Fixaphone. And Fixaphone is now a successful chain in Melbourne, repairing mobile phones. Yeah, right. I got a bit of a taste for telecommunications in that scene. So I applied for a graduate position in Telstra, and uh, I worked through the graduate program there and spent a few years there. And then, um, I met a girl, went to Paris, and um, <laughs> you know, got married in Paris. And uh, when I came back, I kind of had this job waiting for me. So um, basically, one of the founders introduced me, and uh, I guess that was in 2017, and um, it's been Digitech since then. So, how long has Digitech been around before you joined? So, it was around officially in 2014, but I guess, you know, it wasn't starting in earnest until 2017 because we didn't have a proper pit and pipe network until then. Right, and right. I guess everything started. <coughs> I probably and won't explain how Digitech started at all. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was actually just going to take a step back because t two things you mentioned which were pretty cool. So you went to Paris, just just like in the movies, eh? Um, what, what, um, how did you like Paris? I like Paris. I had... Um, I had a girlfriend who became wife who was working and I wasn't, so it was the first time I've ever been out of a job and I loved it. Yeah. Learning. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was really good fun. And, and uh, she was great. Her family was great. So I guess I, get, I had the royal treatment over there. Learning French, Paris, can't really complain about it. But um, to be honest, after a couple of years, I, I started to miss home. So it was good. Yeah, I had enough of the, uh, the Paris lifestyle. Was it directly in Paris, like in, in the city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, I, I remember it being very, very busy, very um, sort of everything was so together. And I'm used to living in Perth where everything's so far apart. You know, if you want to go down to the store, it's, it's a drive and a half. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and in Telstra, right? How was Telstra? Because we hear a lot of sort of negative stories about Telstra, but how was your experience in the graduate program with Telstra? Um, Sorry, I just keep following my face. Um, I, had, I had positive stories about Telstra. I mean, it's true it's a large company and things can take time. Mm -hmm. And I get the reason why I go back there, but they take care of their people. They put a lot of effort into the graduate program. I learned a lot. They put you in different parts of the company. I was in Telstra Wholesale, I was in the wireless side, then I went to project management. So I had a really good taste of what Telstra was about. Mm -hmm. But I guess the negative parts are more, you have to remember that it came from a hundred year old network, even more. You know, from the yeah. post so there were anything that you want to do, you have to integration test it. And integration testing is a big deal for anyone. But when you have to integrate, you know, keeping in mind and considering maybe not a hundred years, but let's say thirty or forty years of devices. Deal. It's like you migrate one thing, and there's three different types of devices there, and then there's all different control plane situations. It's just very messy because of the amount of time that it's been around for. But they had great engineers, they had great project managers, and and they got the job done. But look, they had they had some difficulties with it, and um, I think Digitech is a 
kind of stuck contrast to that. Like when we want to do something, we just do it. Yeah. We just, and then we do it. It's not like we, we have to go through a you know a governance or anything like that. You just go and do it. And I really appreciated that when I got to Digitech because uh, part of my role was implementing processes on setting up some rigor around how things work because mm-hmm. as you you kind of stay in the phone all day and call everyone for every little issue. So I started implementing these processes to go from you know from the basics from you know dealing with the council to get the line access notices to you know to dig up the, the streets of Elwood. Yeah. Put it in there. All the way to explain to a customer that we're not in the end, which, by the way, is <laughs> still happening all the time. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, you kind of have to do everything from the beginning to the end. And I was working with a really impressive team at the same time. So, okay. So then let, let's talk Digitech. What, what's, what are they? Explain to me why they are different from, um, from NBN. Uh, oh. The main difference, there's two main differences. One, it's fully fiber. That's a pretty important difference and a pretty important architectural difference. Actually, since we're talking about architecture, another difference is Melbourne's entire customer base mm-hmm. has two points, of pre- two points of presence, two pops, on the same main road in Port Melbourne, in the, in the main data centers of Next DC. So, what does that mean? So it means that if you're a retailer, all roads lead to one point. No, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Rather than with um, you know, MBN, there's 121 different points of interconnects. So that's a huge benefit to a retailer because if you can imagine, have customers all around the place, mm-hmm. like back call from each of those points of interconnect or exchanges, whatever you want to call them, back to my core network. Whereas if you're a Digitech retailer, it's just Port Melbourne. That's it. And when we go to Sydney and New South Wales, it will just be mascot in Sydney. And right. the same with the And the, re- the reason you do that is because you want to make it as easy as possible for the retailer to focus on what they're good at, which is you know typically marketing for the layer three services. And if it's a layer two services, you want the retailer to be able to pump as much traffic through their for their customers as they can without dealing with restraints or constraints like right. PDCs or network to network interfaces and stuff like that. So you would never have uh, another POI? Like, would there be another re- uh, reason to have another POI at all? Well, in a different state, there would be. You, there are, there's still a distance issue. You still want to make sure that if you have a customer in, in Broome, then the point of presence isn't in Melbourne. Right. Yes. Otherwise, um, yeah, a couple per state, and that's it. And does your, I guess, does your system or your your connection go through your own fiber cables that you've installed, or does it go yes. through? Okay, so it's through your own cables, through your own fiber. So, so how how do you work around reaching customers then? How do you do you literally just go street by street? Okay, so this is the. The basic limitation of Digitex network. Um, unlike in VM, we don't have a nationwide fiber footprint. But um, where we do have fiber, it's it's the best in Australia. So there's two ways you can build a network. Mm-hmm. It's, you dig it yourself, and the other is you dig little pieces of it and put your own pits. But you use existing duct infrastructure. So we have facilities access agreements with the likes of MVN and Telstra, where we can put our fiber through their ducts, and we, we pay them rent. Right. We go to places of high density without having to, like, imagine digging up the CBD of Melbourne every time you want to connect with a customer. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't want it. You don't want no. it. So rather than that, you use someone else's infrastructure, you put your fiber through there, you get into the lead-in of that building, and then from that point, that building is yours. You, know? you can take any customer you want in that building. However, if there's no capacity in those ducts, then we have to do some of our own civil works, and um, we work with some decent outfits, some like, funder solutions, and the likes of them. Really good contractors, which are very helpful in getting us from A to B at, at the least cost and in the fastest time possible. So, 
that's a, obviously you mentioned it's a bit of a limitation, so it's a little bit slow. So how how often do you connect a new building versus a new premises in in Melbourne? So a new premises, I guess you're talking about like a house or an apartment. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's just go per building because there can be many premises within a building. Sure. Every time we connect a new building, we call that a new lead-in mm -hmm. because we're getting a, a new piece of fiber to that MDF. Now, MDF is connected. Uh, we also go through the whole backbone of that building. We put fiber through there. Um, but that MDF could be, you know, Connected to 50 or 200, or even in, in one of our buildings, the Aurora Building Central, I think there's 12 or 1300 apartments there. And I say we average about two or three large buildings per month, but <clears throat> maybe in the medium density units, five or 10. Right. Okay, and so <laughs> I suppose once, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say I'm an apartment, you've connected that. Um, that connection into the MDF there. I I want to let's say connect to DigiTex uh, fiber. How how does that happen? Obviously, I go call up through to you and and do all the sort of the basic stuff. But do you then go out on site to that apartment and put in another cable into my my apartment or my building or my premises, or do you have to do more work after you do the MDF? I mean, it's different depending on the kind of technology. <coughs> Firstly, if you would like Digitech Internet, you'd subscribe through a, through a retail. Right. So Not directly through Digitech. Yeah, yeah, because we're at the wholesale. So we've got a, a functional separation now between you know, the wholesaler and the retailer, the same like wholesale and, um, and the retail. So the retailer tells us, oh, Richard, we've got someone in this address. I then find out who the owner's representative is of that building. Yep. Usually, city managers. I tell them we have a customer there. I say, look, um, can I send out one of our designers on site? They go on site. They have a look at what's feasible. Then they prepare a design. Usually, it takes about one or two days for that design to be prepared, depending on the technology that we, we decide on that particular customer. And it goes through about a week or two of hoops and hurdles through the owners. <laughs> It depends on how fast they are, but typically, well, we don't charge for it. We don't charge DOC. We only charge the customer connection before, you know, through the retailer. So there's really no loss for the, for the owner's corporation or the owner's committee. And then once they approve the design, we perform the leading, we schedule the civil works if they're required, we put that fiber to the MDF, and usually on the same day or the next day, we will then speak to that customer and make sure that we can get access to their apartment and, mm -hmm. and finish the by putting a fire. There's two different technologies that we use, <clears throat> depending on if it's a commercial, basically depending on the type of building that we're dealing with. There's an active Ethernet connection, which is um, using active equipment on, on the levels, and then CAT 6A going horizontally, not a long distance, 10 or 20 meters. That's typically what commercial enterprises prefer. And then in places like Dickens Street and Elwood, where it's typically a residential market rather than a business, mm -hmm. we use uh, a G pod technology. And um, the difference is, well, actually there's a lot of difference between an active optical network and a passive optical network. But in, in terms of um, delivery, it's, it's not so different. Right. So what kind of speeds can you get with a DigiTech connection, let's say I'm in a perfect spot, um, fiber to to the to the door to the apartment to the premises. What 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 can I expect? Symmetric speeds will be across the board, so all clients have symmetric speeds. Download and the upload are the same. Right, both. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, a gigabit is the maximum. I think we have a cheap plan. One of our retailers sells a 50/50, so 50 download and 50 upload. Yeah, or fifty bucks a month, so it's pretty cheap. Oh, that, and how much data do you get with that? Oh, yeah. All the plans, all the retailers are limited. It's kind of necessary. Fifty down, fifty up, and it's fifty bucks. And it's unlimited data. That's in, that's actually quite incredible compared to to the NBN. And I suppose to add to that, you are very similar to the NBN with a much smaller footprint. You're still a wholesaler to a to a retailer. 
uh, providing, but only fiber. You don't do anything like fiber to the nodes or anything like that, just pure fiber. Correct, but I don't want to say that we're that similar to MVN because actually, maybe we'll jump into this part because it's kind of um, okay. the most important difference. <clears throat> if you are a retailer which is receiving an MBN tail, which is the last mile, right? Mm -hmm. Once you get that tail, you're going to be paying some fees. You'll be paying a CBC fee, and yep. I know that you covered that before. You'll be paying an ABC fee, and the ABC fee will change depending on the speed. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, basically, the cost of connecting your hardware to that point, uh, which is an NNI fee, a network to network interface fee. Digitech doesn't have CBC fees. So if you're a layer two retailer, like for example, Lawn Teller, yep. we're in the process of onboarding them right now. <clears throat> they have their own core network, it's in Port Melbourne. They'll be paying a flat fee for a tail. Right? Doesn't matter what speed they want, it's going to be a flat fee. So it's like as if MBN would introduce only ABCs, scrap the CBCs, yep. the only ABCs, and not only scrap. And not only have just ABCs, but just have one price for them. Doesn't matter what spot, what speed it is. So you're saying that if the, the potentiality of that would mean that not only would upload and download speeds be more symmetrical, oh, sorry, asymmetrical, whatever it is, um, and prices would potentially be lower too because of that. Prices will be lower. That's right. The reason is because the retailer won't have to pay for a backhaul service to connect these different. 121 points of interconnect to their core network. So that's one cost saving. Yep. They just have it in Port Melbourne. The other reason they don't have to pay for bandwidth, the CBC, they can pump as much traffic as they can through our layer two network because they're going to be providing the IP transit and the peering themselves. So we have plenty of capacity in our layer two network. Right. If you pay 40 or $45 per month to Digitech, the rest is your margin. That's that's pretty incredible because what you're saying is you're running a business based on that model and it's possible. <laughs> well, it's not just Australia. It's it, it's just I'm not sure how to frame this properly, but it's Australia which is a bit different. The rest of the world has flat fees, and they make it easy for the retailers. We're just a bit different because we've got this legacy from from government and Telstra. Right. So it sounds incredible, but it's not incredible. It's just what everyone. <laughs> so, okay. So you, you've got you've got this this flat structure, um, fifty fifty. How how much capacity is there on this flat structure? Because let let's say let's say your footprint's um, on a on a street. Everybody on the street gets gigabit. How how can you handle everyone just suddenly pumping all those speeds? Yeah. Yeah, cut kind of a long story short, it's it's not a big deal as long as you have. Look, I mean, I'm not a network engineer, and um, the network engineer specifically told me don't get into too much of a technical discussion. Don't get into Digitech, but um, he did he did explain like it's not there's no bottlenecks in fiber. The bottlenecks often occur after the traffic has gone to the core network of the retailer, because after that point the Retailer needs to provide IP transit, peering, and that's expensive. That's where you really right. want to cut your, you know. I mean, unless you're a Digitech layer three retailer, in which case Digitech does all that for you and you're just a marketing shop. But because we're comparing with NBN, um, and NBN is a layer two wholesaler, I'll talk a little bit more about the layer two side of things. Yeah. So the bottlenecks are not in the layer two where you can really cut. You know? That part's easy. It's just switches. You know, you don't have to do a lot of smarts in the router. And fiber is fiber. It goes at the speed of light. We don't even know what the theoretical limit is of you know traffic going through fiber. Wow. So, the, eventually, MBN is going to adopt the same thing. There's going to be enough pressure one day where they're going to, you know, drop these CVC costs and adopt a similar model to Digitech. Hopefully it takes some time so we can get enough of, enough of a market share. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, but um, it's going to happen. It's just the, the obvious consequence. So what? So I'm 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 getting the understanding of why somebody should choose 
um, a DigiTech connection rather than NBN. But what what do you guys say is is the main benefit of going with with you? Uh, well, right now the main benefit is upload and cost. So because of COVID, especially in Melbourne, I mean until very recently, we were all stuck at home working from home. That's yeah. why um, in the baby's room. <laughs> and these conversations require a lot of upload bandwidth. So not just download. Typically, you're downloading a lot, but now we're also speaking, and we're and like you're hearing me. So there's an upload part. Yeah. Which means that you want a business grade service, and business grade means that you know, usually means besides having a good service level of equipment and good reliability, it means that the upload and the download are the same. And that's the main difference. So we charge less, but we provide more. So that's the real reason why you want Digitech. If you're if you're streaming, if you're playing with media a lot, a lot of our customers um, do a lot of editing. Yeah. With NBN services, they had to spend a whole to transfer documents, you know, from one to the cloud, you know. Whereas with Digitech, them forty seconds, which used to take them a whole night, because then they got you know they got a five hundred meg second upload from us, and they were using it. But with NBN, they had two megabits per second. Of course. It's, it's a huge change to their business. Also, if you have kids working from, not working from home, but kids, <laughs> kids at work, work, they don't pay rent. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, no, yeah, it's that time, eh? <laughs> um, if the kids start studying from home or if they're sick and they need to, I don't know, use the internet for whatever happens in schools, I guess they have to talk back to the teacher. I'm not really sure how that works. Or if the parents are working from home and they need to have Zoom conferences or Google Meet conference, whatever it is, yeah. then that upload becomes quite valuable. And... We have, I mean, it's, maybe it's not a very diplomatic thing to say, but we've done pretty well from the pandemic because so many people needed that upload and exactly the provider. Right. So, okay. So you talked about uh, layer three. So what about layer two resellers? Okay. So the layer two resellers, for example, like Launtel or you know, Exitel or anyone... You know, Aussie Broadband, for example, with the NBN. They have their own core network and they have their own you know, network engineers who basically take that NBN tail or take that Digitech tail mm-hmm. and put a layer three on top of it, which means that IP transit that period, that expensive part that I was referring to earlier. Right. They're the ones, they're the traditional kinds of ISPs. I call them ISPs rather than RSPs. I prefer to call RSPs the ones who are just like a marketing shell or you just do billing and marketing and we provide them with a full package. Right. The difference is basically a layer two retailer will have their own network engineering and a layer three retailer, we've got, I guess most of our retailers are layer three, they just do the business part. They may have other products that they put on top of our layer three service, like uh, VoIP and stuff like that, but... Um, you know, we do all of their network engineering and we take care of all the equipment. So at the end of the day, the RSPs really are just a marketing powerhouse. They're just there yeah. just to sell and they really don't do much. Do, do, I, I guess I, I can imagine they'd just be like, if there's an issue, they'll just forward it to you guys or to NBN um, and then they just wait for a reply. They don't do much problem solving. Um, that is it. Well, look, with NBN, it's layer two. Network only. So we need to differentiate between um, MBN is always layer two. They don't provide layer three services. Right. It's just, Digitech is quite unique in that sense. We had to be because who's going to become a retailer for a company in the beginning with only a handful of customers, right? It's not really worth it. So we had to provide a complete package. It's only now that we're able to sign on, you know, the likes of Lawn Tail and stuff like that with layer two. Right, okay. But I say customer service is. Is the key, and um, the reason why you know Launchill, Aussie Broadband, they're doing so well is because it's because of customer service, and um, I'm also quite proud of our retailers. They have excellent, you know, an excellent, um, I guess, experience in customer mm-hmm. service and you know, really good you know, testimonials from our customers. So I'm really happy how we're going so far. I, it's not a small thing. Like you need to be able to answer the phone. You need to be able to understand what they're asking you. And 
you need to be able to do things which you're not really not part of your scope. Like if someone's going to issue with their router and they have a crappy router and they think that your network is crappy because they're in one side of the house, and <laughs> you just have to explain to them, you know, be patient, take your time, try not to crap it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And send out a tech and not charge for it because a growing company needs a good image and the best way to yeah. get a great image is to take good customers. And so, so what, I guess, what from your point of view is the limiting factor of, of things like the NBN? What, what's, what's wrong with it, really, compared to what, it, what, what do you imagine it should be? It should be a <laughs> to the premise network. It should have a simple fee structure for its retailers. And it should put a little bit more effort into the way that it communicates with its customers, purely because when people complain that a technician doesn't arrive, it's damaging to that brand. It's very damaging. Absolutely. So I'd say they're the three things I'd say you'd be interested in improve on. At the same time, and you know, obviously they're our competitor, they have a huge parts in front of them. They've, they've done reasonably well considering how hard it must have been. They could probably do a bit of a, bit of a better job with their contractors and, you know, I know how hard it is to yeah. wire a building with fiber. I get it. You need to communicate to that building that you're coming there. Otherwise, you see people outside your window and, and they're knocking, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable, it's a bit awkward. And I guess that's the reason why they didn't want to do fiber to the premise straight away because they realized, well, imagine retrofitting all of these houses with fiber with <laughs> a lot of communication and that's what Digitech, that's what Digitech shines like. I put a lot of effort into making sure that the owner's corporation and the owner's representative see the design and understand the design. We don't create schematics, we take photos and put red lines on it so they, they see uh, that's where the box is going to go and if they don't like it, they can ask us to move it and we'll move it. So once again, it's a customer service thing and I guess it all comes down to that communication. Yeah. Okay. Look, I, I, look, I've, I'm, I'm very amazed. You're competing with the NBN, a fifty billion dollar infrastructure project sponsored by the government, which is, I mean, that's that's a pretty big behemoth to take on. What, what's, what's in the future for Digitech? What, what are you guys planning? How are you guys planning to take on this? It's a Goliath. It's a David and Goliath battle, from my point of view. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the advantage of David is he was nimble and able to throw rocks, whereas the lads couldn't move. <clears throat> I guess that's a perfect example of how Digitech is compared to NBN. We, if we want to change, we change. If we want to start to use blown fiber or use you know overhead aerial instead of underground, <clears throat> we test it out and we do it. But the way that I think we're going to take it on the best is through this kind of exposure. Um, people will watch this and say, oh yeah, I'm a retailer. I would like more margins. I would like happier customers. <clears throat> I would like to be selling fiber. Or if a managed service provider is going to see this and go, oh yeah, maybe I've got some customers in the Digitech network. Maybe I go to digitech.net, check out the fiber footprint, see if there's a bunch of customers in that area or within the footprint or within 500 meters. Call up Richard or send us an inquiry sign on, start, you know, start on selling or start using Digitech as their infrastructure. Right. As corporation managers, we will provide owners, corporation managers, and their buildings, obviously, with um, optical fiber for free. Call us up, say, yep, yeah, we want your fiber. We'll do the whole installation for free because we're funded <clears throat> with, the, with the intention to, you know, so have the capital assets, do the fiber, and then earn a living on the monthly revenue rather than, right. you know. So that's how we're set up. And, you know, I encourage owners, corporation managers to, to contact us if you have issues with internet in your room, in your building, or if you have um, some customers who are working from home, call us up, send us an email, we'll come to you. And, um, or if you're an RSP or an MSP, a managed service provider, Digitech, uh, Digitech will be great for you guys. That yeah, look, that's that's really cool. I mean, I, I you know going into this, I wanted to find out a bit more about Digitech, and I think that's a really 
I think it's really exciting, and it's amazing that you're going to be competing with with NBN, such a huge, um, yeah, behemoth of of a of a <laughs> government funded company. I mean, does that does that sort of um, scare you guys a little bit, or have you got enough plans and things in the back pocket that you feel like you're going to survive through, especially the fact that NBN is moving to upgrading people to fiber now. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Yeah, I have some opinions on that. <clears throat> so, number one, I mean, we're going to survive and we're going to flourish because we're now retrofitting existing properties and we're working with developers. So, if you are a developer and you want to have a Digitech network in your new development, we'll be supplying that as well. And these two kind of avenues, and that's kind of where I fit into the picture now, <clears throat> they provide enough revenue for us to keep expanding. Right. Um, the other thing is this FTTP announcement by, by MBM. <clears throat> I'm going to be impressed to see how they rewire existing buildings of fiber and how one customer could ask for a faster service. The retailer says, look, they want a gig, MBM, can you upgrade this to FTTP? <clears throat> Let's see how they do it because the communication <laughs> is hard. And I know they're, they're saying it's going to be three or seven or ten billion. It, it, it's going to be a nightmare for them. They need to really reconsider their communication methods. They need to make sure that the line access notices, the designs, and all that it goes to the right people. They respond back. Otherwise, they're going to just have complaints and outages every time someone upgrades. And the problem is, <clears throat> someone in that apartment complex could ask for an upgrade. They get rewired. Someone makes a mistake somewhere in a splitter or whatever it is, and the whole building goes down. Wow. Imagine that on the news. <clears throat> so let's see how they do it. Um, we actually had some representatives from, from some politicians come to us a couple of years ago talking about this kind of stuff and how to upgrade a node from FTT and FTP because this is our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they have the same kind of skills that we do because it's not an easy job. But I'm glad that. Australia as a whole is looking towards a fiber to the premise future. Regardless if it's Digitech or MBN, it's, it's good that people understand that is the way to go because there's one certainty, and that is bandwidth requirements are going to go up. Who else knows what's going to happen in the world? All we know is we're going to need more bandwidth. Maybe Absolutely. the next. <laughs> we could have this conversation in, in 3D eventually. Maybe we'll need a 10 gigabit per second network to, to talk to each other. Maybe there'll be cameras all over this room where you know, each of them is a 4, 8, 20K camera. Who knows? <clears throat> the bandwidth is going to go up. And when it does, that piece of fiber in the ground, like Digitech or NBN, is going to be worth more. So the aim of the game is get as much fiber out there as possible, as quickly as possible. Right, and how? Actually, this—I don't know if you know this—but how long do you, when you put that cable, that fiber cable in the ground, how long can it last there? No one knows. Um, infrastructure providers typically—they say fifty years for something they don't know, because fifty years is long enough for you know investors to create a. <laughs> but no one really knows. It's a piece of glass, so who knows. You, you don't think we'll be digging up and replacing these fiber cables f for a while? Yeah, if ever. If ever. Fantastic. That's what I like to hear. Um, yeah, look, I'm very excited to hear that fiber is coming in, and it's a shame that you're not in Perth, because I would have jumped on G Digitech very quickly with those upload speeds. I think upload speeds is something that is um, people don't think about first at all. It's, it's unfortunate because it's such an important part of the whole package. And, you know, advertise the RSPs advertise things starting with, you know, all these big downloads. You can get all this great 4K content, video, streaming, blah, blah, blah. And then they forget to sort of mention, oh, if you, you, you want to upload some files to Dropbox, oh, good luck with that. Leave it overnight. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, Richard, thank you very much for jumping in. I really appreciate your time. And I really thank you for your insight. That has been very helpful. Um, I will put some links below in this video for you guys to check out um, DigiTech. And, and I'll put some links to, I suppose, the site where you can find availability um, and uh, any other links that, that Richard <laughs> wants. Richard, any final thoughts before we close off? 
No, it actually was my uh, first time being filmed, and um, I was a bit nervous in the beginning, but I think you did a great job of chilling me out. Thanks oh, for that. <laughs> thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Let us know your thoughts below, and uh, if you have any questions for Richard, put them below, and maybe we can get him to jump on again and uh, maybe even do a live one. Get some uh, actual uh, you know, comments coming through, and we can answer them. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming in, and we'll catch you all next time. Cheers. Thanks for that. Thanks. Thanks.